When the coronavirus was rapidly spreading across the U.S. in April and May last year, paramedics in New York City responded to more than 7,000 calls a day. Many in the city and other areas couldn't get over the trauma. Last year, John Mondello died by suicide. Now his mother Eileen is joining others to push for more mental health services for frontline workers. Mola Lenghi spoke with her in her first on-camera interview about her son's struggle. The calls kept coming, and EMTs like Deputy Chief A.J. Briones kept answering. Going as well. On the front lines of the COVID pandemic, what those EMTs saw is tough to shake. They never had time to think. Once it started slowing down, that's, that's when you actually had to worry. Worry, he says, about the toll on paramedics' mental health. PTSD is a rabbit hole. You get angry for no reason. You lose who you are. Part of it feels like you're being a burden to someone else. Part of it is reliving those moments. Hail Mary, full of grace. Eileen Mandela was an ICU COVID nurse when she received a call that her 23-year-old son, John, an EMT, had taken his own life. John, watch over me. Shine your light on me. I love you, John. My son had dreams of a future, and that was taken by this pandemic. John Mandela was fresh out of the EMT Academy when the pandemic hit. He was sent to the busiest 911 call volume in the city. His mother says stress and anxiety consumed him. I think that realization of, yeah, I'm here to save lives, but I can't save you. And I didn't realize how that affected me until very recently. We sat down with John's partner, Delilah Woods, Shakira Tate, and Alexander Puska to talk about the mental health of EMTs. Yeah, it's sort of taboo about. to bring that up, I guess. Right, exactly. Because, um, you know, the job wants you to be Present. Present, exactly. <laughs> there was definitely days where I didn't sleep. There was definitely days where I had dreams of people hanging themselves. Um, I guess at one point uh, I was having suicidal thoughts myself. I think we do definitely do need um, a better support um, system that's in place for us first responders, not only just as or an EMS. Does the FDNY have enough mental health resources in place? I believe they have enough now, yeah. but to say that it's enough for forever, no. It's an ongoing process. FDNY Lieutenant Crystal Hayes is an EMS peer support coordinator. Would it surprise you to hear that some EMTs say that more resources are needed? No, not at all. Sometimes people need more than what we can provide, and then we can either outsource them to somebody that can help them better than what the department can. In Yonkers, New York, Deputy Chief Briones says the strongest thing someone can do is ask for help. It's not a been there, done that attitude. It's I've been there, I know how to help you. I want there to be uh, more counseling made available. And my biggest hope is that no mother should ever feel the way that I do. What would you say to mothers who have a son or a daughter who may be struggling right now. I would say don't take any change in personality for granted. If you see your son or daughter becoming anxious, act on it immediately. If you're wrong and you're exaggerating, that's okay. Because once something like this happens, there's no turning back. Now, if you need immediate help, call the 24-7 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. It is free. It is confidential. Now, FDNY also offers a similar hotline to their EMTs and has a counseling services unit which provides a range of therapy options for groups as well as individuals, giving them a chance to talk to current and retired members who can help, guys. Talking is the first yeah. and most important step, and it's often the hardest one, too. Yeah. And I think, I mean, listen, their, their job is hard enough in normal times. COVID was just overwhelming. Made it worse. Just overwhelming. I can't imagine. What the resources need to be available for them, and they have to feel that they can access them. Works both the ways. Culture. After and, works. Yeah, right. And that is the key. They've got to feel comfortable in accessing right. those resources. Yeah, Great story, Mola. Thanks, guys. Mola, thank you very much.